Um, we're um, we're going to settle in and get still. All right, so we are going to start on our bellies today. So we're going to start face down. Um, if you would like to put padding underneath your hips, you can do a bolster or a folded blanket under like the lower belly hip region. And that just kind of elevates, um, it elevates your hips a little bit. And usually that feels kind of nice in the lower back to have the hips elevated. Fantastic. So yeah, if you are, I should have said this before you lay down, but if, if you want to use the playlist, you can, you can go ahead and start it. You can also start it, you know, once we come up, if, if you don't want to get up. And just once you get yourself settled, Allow the weight of your body to just start to untether and let yourself start to release. So you can decide if it feels good to just turn your head to the side or if you want to make a little pillow with your arms, you can rest your forehead. It's really up to you. Just begin to settle in. Begin to feel your body in space. And just notice what it feels like to come into stillness this morning. Maybe even allow your mind's eye to wander through your body. And just explore all the little pockets in your body where you might be storing some tension or stress. And as you locate these areas, consider that maybe you want to imagine breathing into that space. Or maybe just by becoming conscious of it, you can soften a little bit. Feel your body laying on the ground and feel the ground holding your body. We're gonna land here for just about eight more breaths. Allow the breath to be easy. Just a few more, a few more slow, easy breaths.
And from this position on the belly, we're gonna stay here, but we're gonna draw the right knee out to the right side. So it's like a half frog pose. You can decide if you wanna remove the prop underneath your hips, or maybe you wanna slide that prop out and use it under your right inner thigh or your right knee. So just allowing the inside of your right leg to open up. Now, depending on what it feels like in your body, this might be subtle or it might be intense. But continue to allow your body to rest on the ground. Bring your attention to your right hip and just feel that gravity is allowing the right hip to get heavier and heavier, releasing toward the ground. Stay here. And then you can stay here with your upper body resting on the ground. Or if you want, you could consider lifting your upper body into Sphinx pose. So that would mean the elbows would come under the shoulders. Palms pressing into the ground. <clears throat> so you would feel this a little bit more in the front belly. You could keep your right leg out to the side. If that doesn't feel good, you can slide it back in line with your other leg. Let this be intuitive. So your body will tell you what it needs to do. So if you're in that sphinx with the leg out to the side, the shoulders are above the elbows, the belly is resting on the ground. Just a few more breaths here. Good. Now, if you're in Sphinx pose, remove your left arm, thread it under the right arm, and roll all the way onto your left side for a spinal twist. So if your right leg was out to the side, it's still going to be there, but now you'll be in a spinal twist. If your legs have moved, don't sweat it. You're just in a spinal twist. Okay, so either the right knee is heading towards the left side of the room, or maybe you've stacked your knees if that feels better. Don't worry about the right shoulder coming all the way down to the ground. Just allow your spine to twist. Chest is open. Spine is twisting. Couple of breaths here.
Just a few more breaths. One more breath in. Exhale, come all the way back onto your belly. So releasing the twist, coming all the way back to where we started. And once you feel like you've settled back onto your belly, draw the left knee out to the side. So arranging your knees so it's at a height that feels comfortable, a place where you can stay. And then notice the left hip and see if you can connect to that idea of gravity. Drawing the left hip down. We're going to stay here for about eight to 10 breaths. So I'm going to step away from the camera for just a moment so that I can deal with my dog. And then I will be back. Just a few more breaths. Again, you can keep your upper body resting on the ground or if you want to Come up onto your elbows and keep the left knee out to the side. Just see how that feels. If it brings too much discomfort in the low back, then just release it. Okay, so this practice is an exploration. It's just a, a bunch of suggestions that you can choose to try. and explore. Just a few more breaths and stretching the belly, lengthening the front of the body. And from here, thread the right arm under the left arm and roll onto your right side, finding your spinal twist. So again, if the left knee was out to the side, it's going to stay on that side as you roll into your twist. And of course, there's always the option to just readjust your legs and bring yourself into a spinal twist. Left shoulder softens toward the ground. It doesn't have to make it to the ground. Deep breath in, deep breath out. Few more breaths here. One more breath in. 
One more breath out. Begin to make your way back onto your belly. One last time. From your belly, we're gonna slide back into child's pose. You can decide if you wanna use any props for child's pose. If you want it to be more supported, you can grab your bolster or your blankets and place them under the belly and the chest. Land in child's pose and just feel your body fold in. Shins press into the ground. Forearms rest on the ground. Find a place for your head to rest whether it's on your arms, on your mat, or on a bolster or a pillow. Notice the line of your spine curving and lengthening from your tailbone up through your neck. We're gonna land here for about 10 breaths. Feel your connection to the ground. Feel yourself here in space. Two more cycles of breath. When you're ready, Start to make your way to hands and knees. And as you come to hands and knees, start to make any movements in your spine that feel good. So just allow this to be intuitive. What does your spine want to do when you come to hands and knees? What feels good? Take five cycles of breath to explore any spinal movement here. The next couple of breaths we're gonna make our way back into a downward facing dog. We won't be there long. We're just gonna use downward facing dog as a way to lengthen our back body. <clears throat> so if it feels like you wanna move around in down dog, go ahead and move around. 
If you want to be still in down dog, be still. Just three breaths here. Finding traction in the spine as you press into your hands and as you lengthen your tailbone up and back. Slowly walk your feet to your hands and land in a standing forward fold at the top of your mat. So allow your hips to be, I'm sorry, allow your feet to be at least hip width apart, maybe even wider. And then bend the knees. So soften the knees and just allow your upper body to drape forward. If it feels good, you can support your hands or your arms on blocks or a bolster or a chair, or you can just let your upper body hang forward. Totally up to you. Let your head hang and feel that this posture is an inversion. Plug your feet into the ground, connect to the balance in your feet, connect to being grounded through your feet. And as your feet connect to the ground, pull the energy up from the ground and feel the whole back body lengthen and release. If it feels like there's too much tension in the back of the body, soften the knees more. Or consider pressing your hands into something so that your, the weight of your upper body is more supported. Let's stay with this for Eight more breaths. From here, let your hands reconnect with the ground. They're not there. And step your right foot back, lower your right shin to the ground. So just coming back into a low lunge. Mm -hmm. Let your hands just uh, land on either side of your front foot. Okay. So the right shin is resting on the ground. Your upper body is lengthening forward. Your hands are on, ground, on the ground or on blocks. You can allow your head to hang. Bring your attention to the front of your right hip. And just allow your body to soften into this hip opener. Yeah, so if you need a little padding under your left knee, feel free to do that. Yeah, if you wanna grab a prop and rest your forehead on a prop, you can really fold forward here. So there's no harder fast roll here. It's just a low lunge. I'm finding that space where we're just kind of simmering between effort and ease. 
So it's not a completely passive posture, but it's also not rigid. And let's hang out here just about seven more breaths. on the ground or on your blocks if they're not already there. From here, tuck your right toes. We're gonna straighten both legs and land in pyramid pose. <clears throat> so the legs are straight, the feet are on separate tracks. So the legs should look like a triangle. Upper body is folding over the left thigh. Hands are resting on the ground or props. Okay, now close your eyes, bring your attention to your hips and see if you can draw the left hip back a little bit and draw the right hip forward a little bit. So just playing around with leveling out the hips. So this posture is about lengthening the back of the left leg. We'll be here just a few more breaths. Start to walk your hands toward the right side of the room. You're gonna pivot into a straddle. So now your upper body is hanging in between the legs. The legs are wide. You're facing the side of your mat. Good, parallel your feet or, or even slightly pigeon toe them and just allow your upper body to release. So maybe the crown of the head reaches the ground. Maybe, maybe not. You decide where you want your arms here. Again, it's interesting to notice that this posture is a really great back body opener, but it's also an inversion. getting the benefits of turning ourselves upside down, changing our perspective. And feel the connection of the soles of your feet to the ground. So even though we're upside down and this posture can be a little bit like a balance. Feel that your feet are firmly planted. You are not going anywhere. You are here. Breathing in and breathing out. Five more breaths.
Press your hands into the ground. Walk your hands toward your right foot now. We're gonna come into the low lunge facing the back of your mat. So if you did the other side last time, just simply switch sides. We're starting the whole series over again. Starting with your back leg, the shin is resting on the ground. Your hands are either on either side of your front leg or on the inside of the front leg. So it can be a low lunge or it can be more like a lizard, you decide. We're opening up the front of the left hip. You're in a low lunge facing the back of your mat. So play around with finding the balance between effort and ease here. So if you have a lot of flexibility, resist the urge to totally sink into flexibility and see if you can find a way to uh, ride the line here. So drawing in a little bit and releasing open a little bit. Close your eyes and simmer. And we'll stay here just a little bit longer. The next couple of breaths, we're going to tuck the left toes and start to straighten both legs. So transitioning into pyramid. This time we're folding over the right thigh. So again, the legs are shaped like a triangle. The feet are on separate tracks, so we're not on a balance beam upper body is folding over the right thigh. So you're still facing the back of your mat. If you don't feel fully supported with your hands on the ground, put something under your hands so you have something to push into. If it feels like your back is straining, adjust your posture, bend your knees a little bit. You're still gonna get that length in the hamstring, even with the knees bent. Feel your feet pressing into the ground. Feel the legs lengthen, hips lifting up and back. Three more breaths. Decide if you need more effort or more ease. And walk your hands back toward the left side of your mat, pivoting back into a straddle for just a few breaths here. Decide if you want more stillness in your straddle or if you want to make it a little bit more fluid. If you want to add a little bit of movement, you can bend one knee and then the other. You can rotate your spine. You can connect your head to the ground. 
We'll just be here five breaths, just five more breaths, and then we bring it back down to the ground. After you complete your next cycle of breath, start to think about making your way back to child's pose. You decide how you want to get there. If you want it to be a supported child's pose, set up your bolster or your blanket and then tuck yourself in and reconnect to the ground. Shins pressing into the ground. Forearms resting on the ground. Head connecting either to the ground or to your prop. Follow the line of your spine from your tailbone up through your neck. You're like a little seed dropping into the earth. Stay here, breathing in, breathing out. going to adjust just slightly. We're going to come into a supported twist from child's pose. So coming to hands and knees, slide your knees to the right and bring the left hip up to the edge of your bolster or your rolled blanket and then fold your upper body over the bolster or blanket. So I will demonstrate because sometimes this can be hard to translate. So my bolster is in front of me or my rolled blanket. My knees are going to my right. My left hip is just up against my bolster or my blanket. And then I'm gonna rotate my upper body towards my, my support and then lay on it, okay? Head can turn to the right or the left. So I'll do it one more time if you need the visual. My knees are to the right. My left hip is right up against my, my bolster. And I'm just gonna lay my upper body on the bolster. 
you feel like you need to have more support, you can add a pillow or a block under your bolster to make it higher, maybe double your blankets. And then once you get yourself set up, settle in. Feel that the weight of your upper body is supported. Feel the shoulder blades soften toward the ground. Just feel your body kind of melt over that bolster or blanket or pillow. And allow gravity to assist with your supported twists. Three more breaths here. Now, before you move, think about how you want to make the transition. So you can go from one side to the other, or you can come through hands and knees. You can come through downward facing dog. Do what your body needs to bring yourself back to neutral. And when you're ready, the knees will head over toward the left. Your right hip will bump right up against your prop and your upper body will rotate to face your bolster or your blankets. And then allow the upper body to be supported by whatever's under your body. Take the time to set yourself up and to make any adjustments that you need. And then begin to Settle yourself into stillness. Allow the weight of your body to be drawn downward. Letting go of any effort here.
five more breaths here. Take your time as you ease out of this posture one last time. From here, we're gonna be heading onto our back, setting up for supported bridge. So decide if you wanna put a block or a bolster or a blanket under your lower back at the base of your spine. So placing a prop low enough that you support the weight of your pelvis. And then settle in to supported bridge. Feel your head resting on the ground. Upper back connected to the ground. Back of the hips connected to your block. Soles of the feet connected to the ground. body to land in stillness. Breathing in, breathing out. If you want to extend your legs so that your feet are resting on the ground, opening up the hip flexors, you can try that. If you feel any pinchiness in your lower back, try doing just one leg at a time or not doing it at all. We'll be here three more breaths.
legs are extended, bend them back in. If your feet are pressing into the ground, lift your hips, remove the block, and then settle your hips back onto the ground. And gently draw your knees and toward your chest and either rock from side to side or maybe circle the knees, just whatever feels good here to massage out your lower back. If happy baby feels good here, maybe come into happy baby. Maybe it's happy baby rocking side to side. Maybe your happy baby turns into uh, the legs extending, rocking side to side. Whatever feels good here. Just a couple more breaths, just allowing the spine to settle. And bring your feet back to the ground, knees bent. Cross your right thigh on top of your left thigh and then shift your hips just a little bit over to the right and let your hips or let your knees fall to the left. So coming into a reclined spinal twist, if crossing the legs like this in your spinal twist doesn't feel good, simply uncross them and take a spinal twist of your choice. Okay, just a reclined spinal twist. Arms should be open like a T or like cactus arms or maybe like diamond over your head. Just a few more breaths on whichever side you're on. Whichever side you're on, bring your knees back through center. Take a moment, come back to neutral, and then set yourself up for your spinal twist on the other side. And so whatever you need to do. And then head into the posture. You're still in your spinal twist. Gently bring yourself out. And begin to head towards your final relaxation posture. Setting yourself up in any way that feels fully supported.
It can be a traditional corpse. It can be a restorative posture. As always, it can be seated meditation. We're just gonna settle in and get still for about two minutes. Let your eyes close. And one last time, feel your body settle into the earth. Allow the weight of your body to be held. You are here right now. in the next few moments. Begin to deepen your breath. And allow just a little bit of movement to come back into your body. Take your time. Do you feel ready? And then start to make your way back towards a seated posture. Bringing yourself to face forward. We complete our class together by bringing our hands together at our heart. Together we fold forward, sealing in your yoga practice. Namaste. <sighs> Have a great day, ladies. Thanks for joining me this morning. Hope you're all well. Thank you, Annie. You're welcome. Thanks, you're welcome. Annie. You're welcome. Thanks for showing up. <laughs> Always. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank Bye. you. Good to see you, Linda. Bye. Good to see you, too. <laughs> Take care, Lisa. <laughs> so nice.